my dear listeners, do you need a hand to hold you out of your fears, sins and failures, or a hand so strong to sustain, maintain and protect your life, family and blessings? Then you are welcome to the Regeneration Hour Radio Broadcast with Bishop Maxwell C. Corey. You are in today for another life-transforming encounter with God by His Spirit through His Word. The Bible says He sent forth His Word, and His Word healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. As the Word of God comes your way, it is coming with power, precision, deliverance, and healing. All you have to do is to receive God's Word by faith as He speaks to you through His servants. You can now relax as I invite God's servant, Bishop Maxwell C. Corey, to preach. I bring you greetings of joy in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is another wonderful new day that our Father in heaven has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And in this episode of the program, I want to bring our way a message on the topic, Your eyes shall see the salvation of the Lord. Our Bible reading shall be from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21 to verse 31. I read, And when a days we are accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her Purification, according to the law of Moses, we are accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of Moses, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice, according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the lost Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We bless your name, for you are faithful the promise, and we know you will do it. Our eyes are unto you concerning Nigeria. We believe you. That the mystery and ministry of the Westerns shall not continue in this country. Our youths will never be confined to perpetual hopelessness and frustration. Their strength and talent will no more be channeled to evil. Your salvation will come to this country, Nigeria. We believe you, Lord. We believe you that the hand of Leviathan, the mystery of iniquity, supervising evil in this country shall not continue. The satanic altars energizing and empowering evil and wicked businessmen, politicians, false prophets will not continue. Disaster is their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we receive your word, may your help also come to each and everyone that is tuned to this program. To the praise and glory of your holy name. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, back to the message. As I said before now, I will minister on the topic. Your eyes shall see the salvation of the Lord. And this has to do with you as a person and with all of us as Nigerians. We will personally and individually see God's salvation in our lives. And we will also see God's salvation in Nigeria. Now, let me begin this way. The portion of the scripture we read has to do with the account of the presentation of Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Yahweh in the temple of Yahweh at Jerusalem. And the coming of the Messiah was in fulfillment of God's promise to planet Earth and to the nation of Israel. The coming of the Messiah was first spoken of by God himself in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. After Adam and Eve fell, God said that the seed of the woman will bruise or crush the head of the seed of the serpent. By this utterance of God, it became established in the spirit realm that there's going to come a righteous man, born of a woman, that shall be the redeemer of of mankind and planet Earth from the powers and deceptions of Satan. He also will redeem mankind from her fallen state which she entered into when the devil deceived Eve to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree and Adam willingly followed Eve in disobedience to the word of God. This promise of God to mankind became narrowed to one nation. That is to say that the coming of this Messiah is going to be from a particular nation, the nation of Israel, the children of Abraham. Because after the flood of Noah, in Genesis chapter 11, the whole mankind under the leadership of Nimrod, rejected the leadership of God and decided to find their own way to heaven, courtesy the Tower of Babel. God exercised a right he has as a person to choose a friend, and he chose Abraham. And we see the account of the call of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, when God told him that through him shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That statement makes reference to God's salvation and blessing that will come to mankind through the seed of Abraham. Now, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, Jacob, a grandson of Abraham, narrowed the coming of this Messiah to the tribe of Judah. Judah was one of his sons. And Judah means praise. For in that portion of the scripture, Genesis 49, 10, he said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Furthermore, in First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 11 to 15, God, speaking through prophet Nathan to David, narrowed the coming of the Messiah to David's family. For the Messiah shall be the seed of David that shall build the temple of the Lord, whose reign shall be from sea to sea, coast to coast, all over planet Earth. He is the seed of the woman. He is that stone that was cut by no man's hand that came and crushed the great image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, saw. Now, the nation of Israel for years remained expectant and glad about the coming 
of the Messiah. And this expectation heightens at any time they pass through afflictions in the hands of Gentile nations. Now the Bible says that in the fullness of time, God sent his son, made of a woman under the law, to redeem us from the cause of the law. Now, the portion of the scripture we read for this message is the account of the presentation of this Yeshua Hamashiach, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the temple unto our Father in heaven. When Jesus was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus according to the word of N.J. Gabriel to Mary, the mother. And after 40 days of his birth, the parents, Joseph and Mary, took baby Jesus to the temple of Yahweh at Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. For he being the first male child of the parents should be presented to the Lord according to the law of Moses and also the parents were expected to offer sacrifices to God for the purification of Mary and her male child with a pair of doves or two pigeons which the Lord of Moses permits for poor people. It was during this presentation of baby Jesus to God in the temple that Bible presents to us the appearance or the coming into the temple of an old man in Israel in those days who lived in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. He came into the temple during this ceremony and he took baby Jesus in his hands and made some prophetic declarations by the Holy Spirit concerning baby Jesus. Now the Bible says that this man was a holy man, a devout man living in Jerusalem. He was just. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel or the salvation of Israel or the birth of the Messiah of God and that the Holy Spirit was upon him and by the revelation by the voice and the instruction of the Holy Spirit this man Simeon walked into the temple at about the time Jesus Christ was being presented to the Lord. You know, the Bible says that the secret things of the Lord belong to those that fear Him. Child of God, your ability to walk in holiness and live a prayer life and a faith-based life in accordance with the word of God, connects you to the spiritual channel of heaven concerning events happening now, that is, understanding of them, and concerning events to come in future, that is, the knowledge of them, or pre-knowledge of them, and as well, the understanding of them. This man, Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, recognized that the Messiah has been born. He took Jesus up in his hands and began to make heavy prophetic declarations. At the end of which he said, God, I can now die or go in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, listen to this. The name Simeon, which was the name of this man, means hearing. The English translation of the name 
Simeon is hearing. But here we see this man move from hearing about the coming of the Messiah to the seeing of the Messiah. There is a gap and a period of waiting between hearing what God has promised you and seeing what God has promised you. This period of waiting, in a number of cases, can be a difficult and a trying one. Within this period, some fickle-minded folks get discouraged and they get into unbelief. Some even turn their back on God, telling themselves that they have waited for too long for this promise of God to come true. But the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. And they will walk and not faint. You know, there are different forms of waiting. Different kinds, rather, of waiting. Some wait to see the fulfillment of what God has spoken to them or promised them. As seen in the case of Father Abraham, whom God promised a son, and he literally had to wait for about 25 years before that promise was fulfilled. As in the case of Simeon, who had to wait till old age before he saw the promised Messiah. That's also a waiting that borders on our waiting to see God's judgment on the wicked. There is also a waiting that borders on waiting to see God's visitation of the righteous. That's also a waiting that borders on waiting to see the harvest of our labors, the fruits of what we planted. Like James 5, 7 says, the farmer has to be patient and wait for the first rain and the second rain before harvest. There is also the ultimate of all waitings. Our waiting to see the second coming of Jesus Christ when we shall be redeemed from the corruption associated with planet earth, literally real, the perfection of God's salvation in our lives. Now, in this portion of the scripture we read, the Bible says that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Israel, as at that time, had gone through bondage and afflictions in the hands of different Gentile nations, prominent amongst which were nations like Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Middle Persian Empire, Greek Empire, and then the Roman Empire that was, as at that time, exercising political dominion over Israel. But on that day, Simeon stood in the temple of the Most High God at Jerusalem and carried in his hands the promised Messiah, the seed of the woman, the son of David, the stone that was caught by no man's hand, that shall crush the kingdoms and the empires and the dominions of this world and of the mystery of darkness and shall bring salvation to planet earth and salvation to mankind and shall restore the throne of David and shall sit on this throne and reign for 1,000 years. When Simeon carried this baby Jesus in his hands, he said, my eyes have seen the salvation of God, therefore I can now die. My dear listener, I want to bring a brief word to us. The eyes of Nigerians shall see the salvation of God. 
concerning Nigeria. Believe this. Everyone, devote time in prayers, waiting on God. It's not going to be long. It will come true. Number two, my dear listener, I may not know your goodly, godly expectations. The different promises of God to you, which you you have believed God, but you are yet to see them real in your lives. I want to declare to you that your eyes shall also see those particular peculiar salvation of God to you. You will not die, but you will live and see this salvation of God, and you will declare it in your generation by the mercies of God. It shall come real in your life. People may have laughed at you, taking you for a crazy person. But keep believing God. He that promised is faithful. And to anyone out there listening to me who is not yet born again, is it not high time you departed from sin and give your life to Jesus Christ that you may also see the eternal salvation of God? I want to pray for you briefly now. Father, I pray for these ones that have listened to this message. Anyone out there in the bondage of sin, I rebuke the power of sin out of their lives in Jesus' name. Let your salvation come to them. And let your help be the portion of all who are struggling with one challenge or the other, who are believing you for your help. Don't fail them. Of course, you do not fail. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.